Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In this video, we're going to take a look at another African Kingdom civilization. This time, it's the Berbers. They have some versatile cavalry with a top tier night rush, a couple of options for camels, and even a cavalry version of the skirmisher. They're especially good team players with both a team unit and a unique tech that benefits all of your allies. The Berbers are basically the rich kid everybody invites to their birthday because they give you a good present. Let's check them out. We'll start things off by taking a look at their team bonus, the Genitour. I've looked at them more in depth in their own video recently, but basically they're a higher HP and faster version of the Elite Skirmisher that performs a bit worse in the Castle Age and better in the Imperial Age. The cost is higher, but even when that's factored in, they're an excellent choice in the late game when population limits count, especially if you have bloodlines. A lot of allies also have some interesting bonuses for them, with the Aztecs, Huns, Mongols, Saracens, Vietnamese, and Turks being the most notable. With Bloodlines, they even win cost-effectively against elite skirmishers, on top of doing better against archers in general. The main downside is their longer list of counters, so you'll want to keep them protected with other units in front. Moving on, their first civilization bonus is that their villagers move 10% faster. A quick glance at some world record times for running will let you know why they get this bonus. It kind of reminds me of the old Age of Empires 1 30% faster walking speed, except, well, a lot worse. One thing to know about walking speed is that it's a relatively small factor in gather rate most of the time. If you're setting up your economy reasonably well with lumber camps within a few tiles of the wood line, gold mines a single tile away, and your farms at most double layered, faster walking isn't really that big of a deal. You maybe see a few percentage increase in collection with farms benefiting the most, though in this case it's mostly because they were doubled up. In another video I found the effect was a lot smaller for farms immediately around the town center. Basically as an economy bonus it just isn't overwhelming. In terms of saving your units though it has some pretty profound implications, making them nearly uncatchable by the militia line and much better at running away from ranged units. Even wolves will get fewer attacks on them and you can run a boar about twice as far on the map. I'd say the real economic impact of the bonus is the odd villager that it'll save you. The most significant bonus is up next and it's their stable units costing 15% less in castle age and 20% less in imperial. When you're rushing and scraping for resources, saving 20 for each knight adds up fast and means you're just that much more likely to be able to keep constant production or afford upgrades. To put it in perspective, with two stables constantly making knights, it's roughly equivalent to having four extra invisible villagers. I would actually consider this to be their major economy bonus, assuming you're playing them conventionally and going for cavalry. Just to crunch the numbers, 15% less means 18% more units for the same resources, which if you factor in Lanchester Square Law, means you're actually getting a 38% advantage. The fact this bonus gets even better in Imperial Age is worth noting as well, and means heavily discounted Cavaliers, Heavy Camels, and Hazars, all with bloodlines and full upgrades if you decide to use them. On days you just want to steamroll a town with light cavalry or need to back up your flanks with knights, this bonus has you covered. They're also nearly evenly matched with fully upgraded paladins in the late game when given equal resources. You won't win over the long run, but it's a lot closer than you might expect. The last bonus is basically the first one again, except this time on water. That can be useful once in a while, helping you avoid fights or chasing things down. In terms of speed, the order goes cannon galleons, fishing ships, fire ships, galleys and fast fire ships, and demo ships as the fastest. With the Berber bonus factored in, a few things flip, and their fishing ships outrun fire ships, while their fire ships can chase down galleons and fast fire ships, and their galleons almost exactly match the demo ship for speed. This isn't the kind of thing you need to memorize. In fact, the only thing you'll have to remember is that in most matchups, you'll have the faster ship. As a side effect that's easy to overlook, it also means their fishing ships work a bit faster. Again, with reasonable distances, it's a pretty modest increase, 
With fish traps, we'd even expect a smaller increase since the travel distance is usually quite short. So my general impression of their sieve bonuses is that everything seems to be built around speed, whether that's done directly or through pushing you toward cavalry. As we'll see, that trend continues as we shift our focus to the castle and their unique unit, the Camel Archer. Now, unlike every other camel unit in the game, they actually don't have a bonus against cavalry, but in fact have one against cavalry archers. We could consider them an anti-cavalry archer, cavalry archer. They have a moderate bonus against them, which generalizes to pretty much every similar type of unique unit, except for some reason the conquistador. Now that's not to say their bonus damage should completely dictate when to use them. In fact, the Genitour has an even larger bonus and would be my first choice against Cavalry Archer armies. I think it's better to look at the Camel Archer as a strong standalone unit. In fact, I've secretly had a crush on them since my Thumb Ring video, where they outperformed every other Archer unit in terms of damage output. Testing them again along with some other hard-hitting ranged units, it still holds up really well. With Castle Age upgrades, they're right up there with the best, which is especially notable considering they cost significantly less than their closest competition. If we look at them in the post-imperial stage against a low Pierce Armor target, they fall behind the Mangadai and Mameluke. They're not quite as impressive, especially with the Mangadai's anti-siege bonus factored in, but Camel Archers should be considered very good value for the gold spent. If you're making use of their anti-cavalry archer bonus as well, it's just going to be that much better. But an argument can be made that even if that were taken away entirely, they'd still be a solid unit. That's also comparing them to some of the best unique units. If we compare them to the other Berber options, it's by far the hardest hitting of their mounted archers. Now putting their high damage output aside, they're notable for also being able to take quite a bit. One thing you normally have to watch out for with Cavalry Archer unique units is how much bonus damage they take. There's normally significant damage from skirmishers, camels, and especially pikes. Camel Archers take some of that, but it's nowhere near the same level. In fact, as a general rule, it's roughly half as much across the board. That makes them not only one of the hardest hitting Cavalry Archers, but also the most likely to survive against the normal counter units. A few other miscellaneous things to note are that they're quite fast and even outpace quite a few other cavalry units. The fact they're camels also has the interesting implication of 5 bonus damage against buildings if they have an Indian ally, though it doesn't work against castles and basically stops working against all buildings once the enemy has masonry. The creation time is also quite fast, especially when helped out by one of their unique techs. They're much faster than Mangadai and Conquistadors, for example, though they're not as fast as the infantry unique units. The elite upgrade costs 1000 wood and 500 gold. It only gives 5 HP, 1 attack, and 1 melee armor. That would need quite a few to pay off, but it's in line with some similar elite unit upgrades. They also have a nice short delay on their attacks, like the Mangadai, which makes them easy to micro and in general fun to use. Another hidden quality is that their accuracy is nearly perfect, even in the Castle Age. Thumbring is still important for about an 18% faster firing rate, but it's not as important as it would be for, say, a Cavalry Archer, which in the Castle Age is lucky to hit 3 times out of 4. Also, did I mention that they regenerate health? I think we should talk about their unique techs. The first one we'll look at regenerates health for all Camel units. It turns out though, it's at a pretty slow rate. In fact, it's just a tenth of the healing rate of a monk, and significantly slower than a viking similar bonus for their berserks. Over a few minutes though, it can add up. For example, with an army of 40 injured units, that ends up being the same healing rate as bringing along 4 monks, or 8 missionaries. Keep in mind the tech applies to both the camel archer and the camel line at the stable. Those camels at the stable are also extra cheap as well. There was a well-known bug when the expansion first came out that this technology affected all camels, including both allies and enemies. In case you're wondering, that has been fixed and now it's just your own camels that benefit, so you don't have to worry about that. Speaking of unique techs that help your allies, their Castle Age unique tech is that the whole team's castles work 25% faster, including your own. That applies to both units and techs. Now this is by far my favorite tech in the game, because I always felt like spies took way too long to research. Besides being nice for helping your allies create their unique units, this is also going to help trebuchet production. That can have a surprisingly large impact on a game. For example, this sneaky Japanese trebuchet is attacking this very strategically placed castle. As Saracens, most of the time I can't get the trebuchets out quickly enough to save it, 
with the first one coming out at 39 seconds and the second at a minute 17. Trying again as the Berbers with this tech, the first trebuchet is out at 31 seconds and the second is out around a minute. The third one is out already when the trebuchet is taken down and the castle is saved. As sometimes happens, a small change has led to a big difference in the outcome. So that's the Berber unique units and techs. I was really impressed with how the Camel Archer performed and I think it's quietly become one of the best ranged unique units. The Genitour steals a bit of the spotlight and the stats don't jump out at you, so I feel like it's gone a bit under the radar. The emphasis on camels while also leaving you regular cavalry as an option makes them a good fit for people who are maybe camel curious but not quite ready to take the plunge in the way you have to be with Saracens or Indians. So now let's quickly check out their tech tree, starting with the archers. In the late game, they're missing Arbalest and Parthian Tactics, which makes the heavy cavalry archer a bit of a false friend. They're also not cavalry enough to get the discount bonus, and provided you have a castle, the camel archer is the better choice for that role. The lack of the Arbalest is a bit unfortunate, as well as the lack of an early game bonus for the archer rush. The hand cannoneer is nice, and you'll be relying on it regularly to counter your enemy's halberdiers. Overall, I'd say it's a B plus, based largely on the late game effectiveness of their unique units and the sheer number of options available. Next up is the infantry. With no infantry bonuses, they only get generic champions and are missing the halberdier entirely. For some people, that might be the push they need to go for camels, but more likely they were taken away because it would make them too strong in trash fights, considering they already have the genitour and cheap hazards. Overall for infantry, I'd have to go with a C. They'll mostly be used just to have something to put in front of your ranged units and won't be dazzling on their own. Now let's take a look at their cavalry. The cheaper cavalry bonus automatically bumps them a lot since it affects light cavalry, knights, and camels. The fact that camels regenerate HP also makes them a very intriguing option. There's no way I can give them an A plus without Paladin, so I'm going to give them an A, even though for the classic Castle Age Night Rush, they're probably number one in the expansions. Next up is Siege. I really like to see the Bombard Cannon and the Siege Engineers. It feels like a solid B plus for me, since they have the essentials, but no real bonus. Faster castles are great for making extra trebuchets, though I tend not to make a ton of Siege as Berbers just because they slow down my army too much. Now let's take a look at the Navy. It hurts the late game not having ship right, but to be fair, you have access to everything else, including heated shot. The extra speed bonus is interesting since it lets you avoid unfavorable fights, but at the end of the day, being good at running away doesn't make you top tier. The lack of a strong early wood bonus and ship right in the late game make them feel like a B overall. They'll do all right for themselves, but compared to other naval civilizations, they kind of get blown out of the water. Taking a quick look at the monks, missing the extra HP is a little rough, and block printing is normally a pretty useful one to get as well. Redemption is a necessity and it's there, along with illumination. I'm going to give them a B for monks. A gold bonus would do a lot to help them out here, but they are respectable. Moving on to defenses, the university is missing a few important late game techs like architecture, keep, and bombard tower. I like the idea of the Genitour, Hand Cannoneer, and Camel Line as defensive counter units, though it's unfortunate they don't have the Halberdier. Considering the missing university techs, I'd have to give them a B- for defenses. Now let's take a look at the economy. We can sort of consider the extra walking rate to be a bonus here. The cheaper stable units certainly gives them the appearance of an incredibly strong economy during night rushes, which is definitely a strategy to consider. The only economic upgrade missing is Two Man Saw, which is only a 10% boost at a time in the game when wood usually isn't a big issue. Overall, I'd give them a B for economy unless you're going for a night rush, in which case it's an A+. With knights, it's basically the Slav and Turk economy bonuses rolled into one, which is hard to overstate. So just to wrap up with a few gameplay thoughts, first of all, considering that as a whole Age of Empires players are probably most comfortable with the fast castle night rush strategy, Berbers are going to be a civilization that a lot of people will find they can use quite well the first time. That cavalry strength continues throughout the game right up to the point you'd normally be making paladins, and your late game raiding potential will usually rely on discounted cavaliers, hazars, and camels instead. Now people who play the base game primarily are often in the habit of avoiding camels as the bulk of their army, but it's important to be open-minded about using them more in the expansions, where they take a fraction of the bonus damage they used to from defensive buildings. 
The Genitour can also be useful for raiding, though it's not quite as good at that because of its low attack. I see it as a stronger version of the Skirmisher against Archers, but much weaker against Pikemen unless you're investing a lot of attention into Micro. Either way, it never hurts to have the extra option, and even if you don't use them, odds are at least one of your allies will in every game. Speaking of team games, I find they generally play best online as the pocket player, with easily a top 3 night rush and still one of the best stables in early imperial age. They also have a knack of easily handling some of the traditional power civilizations, like the Huns, Franks, and Mongols, which in itself can also be a big asset to the team. But those are my thoughts, I'd be happy to hear your experience with them as well. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.